The life and sad ending of Sergio Franchi. Sergio Franchi was born on April 6, 1926. He was one of three children born to a Neapolitan father and a Ligurian mother. Sergio, Morella, and Fausta were all born in the Lombardy district. As a child, Franchi sang for the family with his father, who played the piano and guitar. At age 10, he sang a comic role as a hunchback in a school play. Young Franchi formed a three-piece band at age 16 to earn pocket money, and then later sang with a male vocal group in local jazz clubs. But, in spite of his musical talents, he soon followed his father's wishes that he pursue a career in engineering. Franchi pursued but did not finish this training. The senior galley had been a successful businessman who owned several shops but lost all of his assets during World War II and the German occupation. When the family arrived in Johannesburg, they found that the senior galley, a skilled wood craftsman, had established a successful furniture factory. Young Franchi began using his skills as an architectural draftsman and worked for his father as a designer of commercial and industrial interiors. He also began singing in informal concerts of Italian music. His voice attracted growing attention. Hearing him sing, one of the principals of the Johannesburg Operatic and Dramatic Society tracked him down and offered him the leading role in the Gypsy Baron. Speaking little English at the time, he learned the role phonetically. Franchi's debut was well received and was soon followed by leading roles in Pink Champagne, The New Moon, and The Vagabond King. Johannesburg's once thriving local opera season had collapsed after World War II, and it was not possible at this time to earn a full-time wage as a singer. Under Rhoda's tutelage, Franchi's voice matured, and he expanded his vocal range and technique. About his first experience with the fledgling opera company in a production of Carmen, Franchi later stated this initial experience was a disaster. He sang the tenor part in Italian, the baritone sang in Russian, and the soprano sang her role in French. The company quickly matured and Rhoda placed Franchi in leading tenor roles in at least two successful full opera productions, Pacini's Madama Butterfly in 1957, and then Virtus La Traviata in 1959. Some references also list Franchi singing lead performances in Virtus Rigoletto and Pacini's La Boheme. Sometime after the 1956 London production of Grab Me a Gondola premiered, Franchi performed in a Johannesburg stage production of the musical and made his very first recording with the cast. With these experiences, Franchi returned to Italy, aspiring for more opportunities to become an opera singer. While on a performing tour of South Africa, Beniamino Gili had heard franchising and had encouraged him and his family in this regard. In 1959 Franchi made an important contact with an English agent, James Gilmore, who encouraged Franchi to meet with him if he came to London. Franchi had some success when he was leaving Italy in 1959, such as being among the ten finalists in a La Scala competition with 250 other singers. He was also offered the role of Cavardasi in Tosca, which he played in a minor opera house. Looking back in 1983 about hoping to make it in Italian opera, Franchi stated that he didn't think he was in his right mind, I was a dreamer. At the time he believed he was doing well, so he sent for his wife and children. However employment opportunities ceased, and within a year Franchi was broke. Franchi then looked for work in Italy while his wife and children remained in South Africa. He began recording with Durium Records for the popular market, having hits with More Mio and I Tui Oki Verde. An album of Italian songs and several eps and singles in Italy, London, and Canada followed. As a result of his personal appearances and recordings, Franchi began drawing enough attention to become tracked on Billboard. In early 1960, Franchi played the role of Yanni in the short-lived London production of The Golden Touch. His singing performance received favorable reviews. Franchi's second Palladium TV show led to a series of events that launched Franchi's American fame. 
viewing his performance that night was Norman Lubbock, who alerted RCA Victor about him. A recording audition was arranged via two tape selections sent to New York. Ed Sullivan was in the audience that night and soon contracted for future Frankie appearances, including a second TV appearance on his show the following week. Frankie would later become one of Sullivan's two or three most favorite guests, and appeared 24 times. Sales for the debut record did well, peaking on the Billboard 200 at number 17 at the end of December. The year was concluded with successful concert appearances in Washington, D.C.'s Constitution Hall and in Boston's Music Hall. Franke made his nightclub debut at the Empire Room of the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. While he was there he met Metropolitan Opera soprano Anna Maffo, with whom he was to collaborate on two RCA Victor albums that year. Frankie continued to have many successful appearances at many large venues, including one with Barbara Streisand, as well as more Sullivan television appearances. He soon made his Las Vegas debut at the Sahara Hotel as the opening act for Bob Newhart. These successful performances were interspersed with multiple European events. Franke recorded three more albums for RCA Victor, all three of which peaked on the Billboard 200 pop charts in 1963. His debut album, Romantic Italian Songs continued on the Billboard 200, he completed the year as the opening act for Juliet Prowse at the Coconut Grove. Frankie's February 1964 appearance at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas attracted the attention of Time magazine, as his performance garnered more attention and popularity than that of the star performer, including getting standing ovations and multiple encores. Frankie's singing, dancing, and comedy were then prominently featured on six television specials. Frankie made a noteworthy appearance at the 35th Annual Chicagoland Music Festival in August 1964, as well as starring in a performance at the Coconut Grove, as well as doing other events. While at Coconut Grove, he recorded his Sergio Frankie, live. At the Coconut Grove album. 1964 was a significant year for Frankie for professional and personal reasons. In a move to attract more mainstream pop audiences, RCA Victor switched Frankie from the Red Seal label to their standard black pop label. He also changed his professional representation to the William Morris Agency. Although he had already received offers to star in several films, Frankie did not find a role he wished to play for a few more years. Frankie then moved his family from London to a Park Avenue apartment in New York City. He also filed the first papers in the declaration of his intent to become an American citizen, among other endeavors. Frankie was always attracted to the arts and could play multiple instruments, including piano and guitar. Frankie also always carried a sketchbook with him on all of his travels, and in later life, devoted himself to watercolor painting in his private studio. On February 14, 1953, he married Yvonne Lindsay, a South African ballerina of English extraction. They had two children, a daughter, Greta Teresa, and a son, Roberto Danilo. They divorced on December 31, 1981, in Clark County, Nevada. Frankie married his second wife, Eva E. Simon, in New York City on June 14, 1982. Simon had emigrated with her family to America from Budapest following the 1956 Hungarian Revolt. It was a second marriage for both. His planned return to China never occurred. His last of more than 130 television appearances was on Live, with Regis and Kathy Lee on July 4, 1989, and Frankie's last concert was at the Warwick Musical Theatre on Saturday, July 29, 1989. On August 3, 1989, while rehearsing for a South Shore Music Circus concert the next day, Frankie collapsed, was hospitalized, and the rest of his summer concerts were cancelled. Tests revealed a brain tumor and, despite radiation therapy, Frankie succumbed to the illness. He died less than one month after his 64th birthday. <laughs>